Tonight, we bring you a different kind of story about Nelson Mandela, who died yesterday at 95. It's already Saturday morning in South Africa, and overnight, his flag-draped coffin began its journey back to his ancestral home to be buried. But long before he became a global father figure, when Mandela was locked for decades in a prison cell, a lonely voice protesting his country's brutal racial policies, this broadcast made a commitment to cover his struggle when few others were. Nightline has been there every step of the way on his long walk to freedom. Here's ABC's John Donvan with our story. In the epic that is the story of Nelson Mandela and South Africa, a small but important chapter happened to have been played by an American news program. This one, Nightline. On a February afternoon in 1990, TV stations everywhere across the globe, really everywhere, held this single, live, totally uninteresting shot on and off for close to an hour because everyone was waiting finally to see this, this distant figure. Nelson Mandela, a man who had not been photographed literally in almost three decades, finally walking free from prison. And waiting there to interview him, Ted Koppel who told me, so was everybody else waiting to interview Mandela, only none of them had an appointment. And everyone had rented a house across the street from Winnie Mandela's home in Soweto. And there we were with our, with our binoculars, uh, you know, sitting there to try and figure out, he's here yet, he isn't here yet, which one of us is going to be invited to come over there and do the interview? Dan Rather was over there. In fact, I know damn well, Dan beat me. He was there first, I was there second. This is ABC News Nightline, reporting from South Africa. Second, maybe. Tonight, we have only one guest, Nelson Mandela. But first on earth to come to Mandela on that night's broadcast with an opening question that went not to politics or to race or to the future, but to sports. You were surprised by the fight the other night, huh, with Tyson? Yes, I was very much surprised. I uh, took it for granted that he would win. So did he. You went right to the boxing question. I did. And <laughs> what was your plan? I wanted to hit him with a question he really wasn't expecting. Did you ever think of turning pro? Turning professionally? No, I never did. But you were a good, you were a good boxer. Well, uh, I do not know. That is for others to say. No, but I enjoyed the sport. Nelson Mandela was never an easy man to loosen up. It's long enough ago. A little bit of immodesty wouldn't hurt. Uh, no, I enjoyed. I enjoyed the sport. You see. And did Mandela loosen in that interview? A little, not really. Even talking basics like the prison food. We live on millipop in the morning, millis for lunch, and millipop in the evening. What is millipop? Can you explain it to well, an American you audience? Well, it's a millis ground and cooked. Like a porridge? Like porridge, you see? Yes. And, uh, but um, and the cooking in prison was uh, very bad in those days. And uh, the preparation of the food left very much to be desired. Even in that, Mandela maintained a certain rectitude in language, gesture, and posture that set him at a distance. Your time with him it w was, was rather formal. Yes, Nelson Mandela was not, uh, was not someone who was going to be my buddy. Uh, and he wasn't going to let me be his buddy. And yet Mandela, in subsequent years, rarely, perhaps never, said no when Ted invited him to be on Nightline. And that willingness, Ted is certain, stems from a single history-making week of television that Nightline produced in South Africa in the 1980s. South Africa is changing. We said we will only do this series of programs. We will only come to South Africa if members of the white government agree to engage in dialogue on the air with... Which had never happened on their own television. Had never happened on their own television. If you will agree to engage in dialogue with black leaders. So we actually had an occasion where the South African foreign minister at that point, Pick Botha, appeared live on television in the United States with then Bishop Desmond Tutu. And it was an extraordinary moment. Do you think it is a ghastly policy? Well, if, uh, if under apartheid is meant degradation and dehumanizing of black people, then I'm also against apartheid. 
It was rebroadcast the next day in South Africa on the SABC, South African Broadcasting Company. And the impact was huge, absolutely enormous. And it all happened, remember, while Mandela was at that point in his 23rd year of imprisonment. Although Ted says, in an important way... Mandela was there. Mandela was in every exchange. We could not have done what we did in South Africa had it not been for Mandela. In what way? In the sense that Mandela exerted such moral suasion. But those shows also made a connection. Well, the door with Mandela was open for you because of the week that you did. Because yeah, of the week right. that we did. I mean, he heard about that and he knew what we had done. Ted had a moment with Mandela years later during a town meeting held in the United States. I interrupted him, I think, and I was going to say something else. And then he, I thought, was going to jump in and say something, so I paused. And he said something like... I don't know if I have paralyzed you. No, 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 no. I... <laughs> And the largely African-American crowd uh, at the town meeting loved it. You know, here, here's the white anchor getting it, you know, right in the chops from the man himself. It was a great moment for him, for them, less great for me. But... Except now it's a great story to tell. Oh, yeah. No, they were not buddies, but for maybe a brief moment, they were both part of the story, something journalists are supposed to try not to be, but sometimes it cannot be helped. We don't get the opportunity very often to really make a difference. I think our programs uh, in South Africa made a difference.